Let's begin tonight in Samoa, where families are continuing to avoid hospital treatment and are still flocking to alternative treatment providers despite the deepening measles crisis and a state of emergency. Three more people have died overnight, bringing the death toll to 42. Most of them are children, and many of those children are aged under four. One of those alternative treatments is alkaline water, known as Kangen water, with one seller telling Checkpoint today he had almost 2,000 customers in the past two weeks. But when we attempted to speak with one of the alternative healers today, he became violent, calling in his own private security guards, hitting our car and even trying to take our camera. Our reporters, Alex Perite and Logan Church, are in Samoa. We'll hear more from Logan in a moment, but first, his report. It's early in the morning in Apia, Samoa's capital. At the city's hospital, almost 100 vaccinators, police officers and other medical staff gathered before piling into vans and heading out to the furthest reaches of Samoa. Places like Manunu Uta, about an hour away. When we arrived at the seaside village, kids were playing on the grass. Some men were building a new school. Those vaccination teams came last week, but it was too late for one baby, the only measles fatality in the village. Fai Fruen is one of the village residents. His two daughters contracted measles. I have, uh, I have two kids, um, both uh, girls. They all uh, affected by measles. Last uh, Saturday, I went to the hospital and... He's just one of the many parents who took their kids to hospital to get the vaccine. At the hospital and at the mobile clinics, more than 50,000 people have been vaccinated so far. But many of those are not in one of the most at-risk groups of people, those aged under four. Vaccine is, is very important because measles is the, is the virus is, uh, is, is in, inside our body. But uh, vaccine is, is the key to, to, to protect and cure the, cure the measles. Yeah. But I heard some parents uh, use the environment trees and and other, and other water to, to cure the, the measles, but I think measles is cured by the, by the hospital. One of the most common home remedies we discovered today was kangen water. We wanted to find out more about it and where it came from. Down the road, Edward Williams Jr. is selling kangen water for one tala Elisa, almost 60 New Zealand cents. He took us around the back of the shop to show us the machine that makes it, which looks like a water filtration system plugged into the back sink. The machine is bought online from Australia. Uh, we, um, we asked one doctor who um, lived down there, and then he said that while he's older drinking the water, he said that it's a good water, but it's not approving the, um, the Ministry of Health. So, well, I don't know, <laughs> I told him that if I could keep, keep on selling, but he said, it's all right, it's all right. Edward tells us he suggests people also get vaccinated and is clear that there is no proof backing up the claim his water cures measles. But nevertheless, sales are going through the roof. So this is the first week. Yeah, first week, there's um, 511 we deposited. And then some second week, 1,237. The machine itself costs 12,000 tala. That's about 7,000 New Zealand dollars. It's like, almost like 12,000 some, a lot of money. That's why we only have three routes. Um, it's here, Waiteli and Vaivasi. One of those areas is Vaivasi Thai. It's home to Fritz Aliasa. One of those checkpoint understands is promoting the use of Kangen water as a treatment for measles. We went to visit him this afternoon, trailing behind two other carloads of people seeking his alternative treatment, along with a van load of security guards. As soon as we got out of the car, Fritz told us to leave, accusing us of spreading lies. We had not even spoken to him yet. We were asked to leave and began to film from the street. But he and two of the security guards ran over, before the security guard ripped open our car door and Fritz tried to grab our camera. When he couldn't, he smashed the car door frame hard right above my head. Meanwhile, at Liu Lumoenga District Hospital, New Zealand doctor Scott Wilson is in charge of looking after those who have contracted measles. He told us some of the children he's seen were deteriorating right before his eyes. 
We're, I think we're running around 18 patients at the moment in the ward. It's been, uh, we've been very fortunate. Um, the last couple of days have been, you know, at the, um, at the more manageable end of the spectrum. Um, but, you know, uh, overnight we could be back up at 30. You know, it's just, it's impossible to tell. Um, a lot of them are very, very unwell. Um, we did transfer one um, earlier today through to, to TTM, who obviously reached a point where we didn't feel they were responding to, to the therapies that we were, that we were administering. Um, we've got a few more there that are, that, that are you know, they're probably getting towards the, the, the upper end of what we can provide in, in a small hospital like this. He wouldn't comment on the use of Kangan water specifically, but strongly encouraged anyone who had concerns about their or their child's health to come in. Alternative therapies, um, mainstream medicine typically doesn't really have a particularly strong view on them as long as they're not to the detriment of patients' patients' care. So as long as people aren't being taken advantage of financially or, or you know, or being given false, false beliefs. Um, I don't know, I, I saw a, a number of reports about this, I've spoken to a number of people. Um, I probably don't know enough about the, the, the details. We're focusing very much on, on what we can do for the children that come here. And certainly I'd encourage parents, look, if children are very dehydrated, you know, they, they need fluid. You know, and whether that can be given by mouth or whether it needs to be given through an IV, you know, if they're sick with an infection, you know, they need antibiotics. The death toll now stands at 42, and it's clear that this crisis is far from over. Let's now go live to Logan in Apia. Logan, tell us a little bit more about this incident this afternoon. Well, it certainly was uh, frightening, Lisa. We wanted to go and speak to Fritz Aliasa, especially after we had seen how this Kanjin water was made. We wanted to see how it was being used, and we understood that Fritz was one of the people who was using it, promoting it as a potential uh, treatment for measles. So we drove up to his property, we parked up and got out of the car. We weren't holding our cameras or anything, but he clearly seen us uh, from afar and called out telling us that uh, we were not welcome there and we were to leave. Um, we, we tried explaining we wanted to speak to him, but he, he was really keen on us leaving. So we got back into the car and drove down the road um, where I got out and started filming. But then um, a couple of the security guards who, as you heard in my story, had pulled up about the same time we did, uh, came walking quite fast over, as well as Fritz um, himself. Um, as, I, as I tried to close the door of the car, one of the security guards pulled it open and Fritz himself came and started shouting at us, attempting to steal our camera um, to, try and, to try and take that footage and demand at least that it was deleted. When we uh, obviously weren't compliant with that, we, um, he, he uh, hits the, uh, the door, um, the sort of door edge quite hard, just a little bit above my um, head. We um, saw a, a gap and we, um, well to put it bluntly, floored it and got ourselves out of there. Um, but it certainly was a frightening situation and very disappointing because a lot of people are talking about this um, alternative treatment and we really wanted to see how it works. But um, RNZ will be um, looking at putting its own complaints into the police about what happens. So has the government taken any official a action against those people who are promoting these alternative remedies for measles? Well, the short answer, Lisa, is we're not sure. We tried going to the police today, to, to uh, that being one of the many questions we wanted to ask them, but we didn't get um, any response. And as we, um, as you heard in our story, we were driving just out of town and saw that it was being sold very freely and people were lining up to buy it and the people selling it were selling large volumes of it. So at this stage, we don't know if any official action has been uh, taken, especially as the government continues to push out its message of Guessing vaccinated is one of the best ways to prevent the spread of measles in this country. So what can you tell us about the claims that are being made about the so-called benefits of Kangan water? What are they saying? Yeah, I have to be crystal clear, but these are all claims. But it was um, quite impressive when we uh, met the young man who was selling the Kangan water in that store. He showed us the list that came from the supplier and it listed um, a, 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 a large amount of things, 100 and, 150 um, health benefits, uh, um, including helping cancer, diabetes, cardiovascular disease, sort of a bit of everything um, on that list. But we have to be crystal clear that those were only just claims and even those selling it, um, we're also clear that they weren't claiming that it would be a cure. In fact, they were saying that people should still get vaccinated anyway. And so what do we know about how that mass vaccination campaign is going? 
Well, on the face of it, the people who are out there vaccinating are, d are working really, really hard. You can even see um, on their faces as they left this morning and come back, they are exhausted. And on the face of it, you can see that in the numbers. Today, the government said that more than 50,000 people had been vaccinated as part of this program. And just keep in mind, Samoa is a country of just shy of 200,000, so a quarter of the country. But we really need to delve into these figures and have a look as to who are being vaccinated rather than the overall number because there are more groups at risk than others. Now one of the most at risk groups is that group between six months and four years old and we actually went back through the government releases to the media over the past week. At the start of this week they said that 4,222 people in that age bracket had been vaccinated but the release today said that the exact same number had been vaccinated. So that tells us that there hasn't actually been an increase. So that raises the question of who else is being vaccinated and those in that age group who haven't been vaccinated, where are they and what are the parents doing to keep them safe? Yeah, well, you have been travelling around, uh, around a little bit today. So what are locals um, telling you about this? How open-minded are they regarding getting their babies vaccinated? Certainly, Lisa, plenty of them. Uh, we spoke to many um, mothers and fathers who said that they were really quite keen to get in as soon as possible and get their kids vaccinated when um, when this outbreak got underway. You heard in my story of the father of his two daughters. He got his uh, kids um, in as soon as they showed any symptoms, and they are, they are doing well now. They are recovering really well. But on the same token, this morning we spoke to a, to a woman in Apia who had um, come through. She was about to send some of her family out on a flight. She had a young child with her who was not well at all. Um, and she said that she hadn't been vaccinated and wasn't planning to vaccinate her due to other, what she believed to be other um, remedies. So there's certainly a lot of people on both sides of the fence at, at this stage when it comes to vaccination. Um, but the government message still is really clear, as well as the message from those who have come to Samoa to help is that if you are showing any symptoms of measles or any problems at all, is get in and seek help from the medical professionals. Thank you, Logan. That is Logan Church reporting live from Apia, and we'll have more from our team on the ground there, Logan and Alex Perite, after six.